You are listening to a Clark's World magazine podcast with your host and narrator, Kate Baker. Greetings, Clark's World citizens. I hope this podcast finds you extraordinarily well. Thank you for spending this time with us as we go through the stories of April 2021 from issue 175. And as always, thank you so much for your support. Please visit ClarksWorldCitizens.com to see how you can be a part of this magazine each and every month. And thank you, if you already are, by subscribing, by word of mouth, by supporting our Patreon. Every little bit helps to bring you these stories. This story is titled The Sheen of Her Carapace and is by Richard Webb. Richard Webb writes long and short fiction and has been published in Teleport Magazine, Legends, Newcon Press, Blood Moon Rising, Remastered Words, and Starship Sofa, among others. He was the winner of the British Fantasy Society Short Story Contest 2020. He lives feral in the wild, carving out stories on trees with his bear claws. He tweets at raw underscore writing. So my dear listeners, I hope that you can sit back, relax, and let me tell you a story. Falling in love. Always wondered about that. Falling like it's an accident. Tripping over something. Our ship, Perseverance, drifted into orbit of a planet we call Big Yellow. We were wandering lonely as a dust cloud, having jumped away from some bad heat back in Primus Sector. Got our shields busted up. Lost most of our fuel. So there we were, just sitting in the middle of nowhere. Listless. Aimless. I guess I was untethered too, isolated, restless, vulnerable to the gravitational pull of anything that might reel me in. I suppose I realize now how lonely I'd been, alone in a crew of 150 souls, if you believe that. Not many were my sort, all by the book uniform types. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. Snap salutes and buzz cuts. No one else would skin like mine, that's for sure. The discoloration was just a side effect of the gun med drugs. Kept me alert but calm, eased the jitters, gave me a sure aim at two clicks. Earned me two stripes and a sweet pay raise, but I had to keep taking the drug so my skin was getting worse. You look like a walking bruise, said Petrov, the medic. You should let me check you over. You think I look sick? Well, it's hardly... Her words drifted off. All mottled purples like that. I've never seen such a strong reaction to the gun meds before. I'm fine, really, I said. Just to be sure, though, yes? I didn't reply. Her lips smiled at me, but her eyes did not. Listen, I know you get a hard time about it. Most just give me a wide berth. But some of the others. I know that there are real bruises under all that do. Can't be easy. You mean Mendez? Pretty rich coming from the likes of him and the other exo-framers. If you ask me, they're freaking weirdos. I meant Ciro. Gotta admit, that came like a tail slap from Raptor Denmother. Ciro? That's insane. That's done with, but I don't say anything. I think you like standing out because you want to be hurt, she says. Just like that. Because of your guilt over what happened between you two. I mean, why would you do that to yourself? I continued. Have chromium exostrands attached over your limbs. Petro frowns. At least their frames are covered up. But you look so different. I don't guess this is how I'm supposed to be. It doesn't have to be. Why did you refuse the skin bleeds treatments? I ain't changing just to please a-holes like Mendez, I said, louder than I meant. Petro was only trying to be nice. But Ciro? Holy crap, Petro. What are you going saying that for? It was true that I wanted to get far away from that part of my life, so when the chance came, I signed up and jumped aboard Perseverance. Ship needed gunners to keep bandits at bay, but it didn't sound dangerous, until Big Yellow caught our drift, pulling us down without enough juice in the thrusters to kick ourselves clear. The crew was pretty frazzled out of the frying pan and all that, too far out to reach the rest of the fleet with our satcoms. 
Plus, we'd lost our admiral during that skirmish on Primus, so morale had taken a kicking and the discipline was ragged. Someone suggested firing distress flares, but we didn't because you just don't know who is going to come looking for you. It was just us, and that was that. All through the tense hours of gravitational descent, we held meetings, planned some, prepped some. The research team ran scans, looking for the usual stuff. Oxygen, water, food, some sort of usable biofuel source so we could do a quick compact compost and combust and get the hell away. The medic team gave us shots for viruses that might be on the surface. The QM team ran a check on supplies, ammo, and Atmos suits. The recon team geared up for touchdown, kit checks, going over call signs and drills. The engineering team got to work on ship repairs, power saves, and security lockdowns. And everyone made sure we were primed to defend ourselves from hostiles. Turned out we didn't have worried so much. Big Yellow was pretty good to us. A breathable, moist atmosphere, confirmed by our sensors as containing water. Plus, the planet had a bioenergy source, though it would take two weeks to harvest and process enough plant matter to see us on our way. Even so, we weren't sure who or what else lived there. First time out, the recon vehicle stayed on radio all the time and gathered a shitload of data. No hostile encounters, nothing more, a few rodent like creatures, and a ton of creepy crawlies. But that was to be expected, landing in the jungle. Things weren't going to be easy, but we could make it if we held together for a while. Everyone breathed easier. Second time out, not so good. The recons went farther, but lost contact. Thought we'd lost them for good. Eventually, they reported back. They'd gotten surrounded by creatures. Bugs, they called them. Only they're the same size as us. Most were pretty freaked out by that. No harm done, though. The bugs don't bite, recon guy said. Reckons they were being studied, so these bugs got to be smart. Though one of Mendez's homies makes a crack about being probed. Huh. Any bug would be smarter than those guys. Anyway, we debated our next move. We needed fuel but had to ration supplies. Staying on board wasn't an option. But leaving the ship didn't appeal much neither. All told, the creatures made our minds up for us. They just came right out to the ship. Hardly surprising a thing like that in your backyard. Pretty soon you'll come to take a peek. Dozens of them showed up on the security screens. Cue another meeting on board. Some were just blasting away, crippled ship or nothing. Some were for meeting them. Try and communicate. Of course, Mendez and his game were all for tooling up. I just walked away. Doubt anyone even noticed. Got an Atmos suit on and went right out to meet them. Couldn't tell you why, not exactly sure I wanted to die, but looking back in my heart, I was ready. The heart that went numb after Ciro. Like it went black with frostbite or something. Anyway, figured if I went out to see these bugs, we'd learn something, maybe cut through all the BS on ship. I just stood at the bottom of the bay doors. The creature stood too, not moving, just watching. Then one of these bugs, insect folk, I prefer to call them, moved forward, real slow. Wasn't aggressive, more like curious. Shy, even. One of their leaders, I figured, perhaps came to make peace, and that's how it started. The sheen of her carapace shimmered in the light as she came toward me. Never seen anything so beautiful in my whole goddamn life, like living art. I felt it was a she on account of a delicacy in her manner. Made me reckon her female, but really I got no idea if they even have a gender. All those colors, some I was pretty sure I'd never even seen before. The way they caught the light. Iridescent, Petrov says. Well, I was just mesmerized. No other way of saying it. Time passed. Hours or seconds, I don't know. Just me staring. They got these compound eye-like features either side of their heads. Hard to make out, but I'm certain hers were fixed on me, so the two of us was just as transfixed by the other. I walked forward real slow, hands out. I got near to her and reached out, nice and easy. She flinched. But she didn't pull away as I laid my fingertips upon her abdomen. It was cool to the touch, no friction at all, like porcelain. Cool, not cold. Made me feel calm and peaceful. No one made me feel that since... him. Her antenna twitched, and I could tell she was figuring me out, too. 
We connected, reading each other, right from the start. Petrov said most of the crew were horrified, though some always thought a weirdo like me would get along better with some not-human-kind. Whatever. It proved the bugs weren't about to feed on our brains or nothing. Eventually, a few others came out to the bay to join me. We all spent a long time just watching the insect folk and them watching us back. No one too sure what should happen next. If there was a protocol for this kind of meet and greet, they weren't in the manual. The insects started to retreat all at once. I took it as an invitation. Don't ask me how, but I knew they wanted me to follow. Nothing ventured, right? So they led off into the jungle and I'd go with them. The recon team leader barked in my earpiece to stand down, but I just disabled my comms and strode off. Me and the insect folk walked a few clicks by my reckoning. The one that came to me first stays alongside me all the while like she's my guide. I reach my hand out, real gentle, brush my fingertips along her back. Her hind wing pair thrummed away, letting me know she was pleased. That's what I wanted to think, anyway. A whole new planet laid out before me, but I could barely take my eyes off of her. I was nervous, sure, but that excited kind of nervous you get when you go off into the unknown, too high on good feelings to be wary of danger. And when someone makes you feel like that, you just... know. Never really knew what I should call her. They have names they ain't told me, but... It felt right to call her something, so I decided on Rose. Used to know someone called Rose I liked. Suppose that's why. I stayed through the night. They watched me closely all the while, all up close around me, their antenna twitching close to my face. Rose never left my side, and I liked that. Felt like she wanted to reassure me. I think they figured out how and what we breathe and eat, because after a while they brought me some clear liquid in this shell-like thing. Didn't smell of anything, so I thought, what the hell? And I drank it. It was water, close as I could tell. Then later, they brought me some leaves. They smelled okay, and they were dark green, so I figured probably full of good stuff. I bit off a bit. Tasted like spinach, so I munched some more and didn't feel unwell or nothing. A bit like one of those macro salads in the lab grow back on the ship. I guess I already knew I was staying forever. Days passed with me being center of the universe, so it felt. As they studied me, I was picking up some of how they are. They live in groups, in these kind of cave pods made of some chitin-like substance they chew out, like wet, mashed-up chalk in all different colors, and use their proboscis to paste on. Once it is dried and hard and smoothed out, it's beautiful. Colors flowing together, half patterns appearing, then blending into something else. They take pride in this, I think. Like it's sort of an art for, for them. Shows they got a sense of aesthetic, as Petrov would say. Though they ain't got our tech, they don't seem to need any. No electronics, but no need for heat. As it's always warm, their food grows on trees, reassuring me that they weren't about to tuck into yours truly. And they don't need vehicles because they don't need to go nowhere. They got water and sanitation figured out good enough. Pretty tuned into nature, I'd say. Simple, uncomplicated balanced. I like that. There's something relaxed but efficient about them. They got what they needed. Need. They got. No frills, no fuss. The peacefulness of it all was pretty sweet. Felt like somewhere a person could really get their shit together. Days later, one of our recon vehicles pulls up nearby. The insects were all agitated by that, and I was anxious too. I didn't want a situation, so I went out to meet it. The Reconners looked shabby, ragged, desperate. I saw them for what they were, I guess, crooks and mercenaries. In my head, I'm already thinking of the crew as them rather than us, I noticed. Just looters with lasers, come to steal but prepared to hurt. But Petrov was with them too, so maybe there was hope. Captain Nukuro wants you to report back, shouted one of them. No shit, I said. Since when was she voted captain? Since, uh, just after you disobeyed orders, shouted the recon team leader. You goddamn stupid. Since the crew council voted her in shortly after you left, butted in Petrov. She wants to know what you've learned. Get in the vehicle, you fucking freak, said the reconner. Petrov said nothing, but the look in her eyes told me it was the only way. 
Later, during my debrief with Captain Nukuru, in which I was pretty close to being court-martialed, like I could give a crap, she told me she wanted me to go back, befriend them, and then get them to move on. Turns out they live right over the top of some vein of minerals that could give us a payday to return home with. Captain gave me the details, but I wasn't listening. Can't go digging under someone's house just because you think you've struck oil. I was confined to med deck with Petrov running observations on me, testing for viruses and such. Reckon she was also ordered to do a psyche eval too, only she was real subtle about it, just making conversation, not taking notes. So, she said. I smiled. Where the fuck do I start? I told her what I could. I was worried. I look in her eyes and I know it's true. How did you know they wouldn't harm you? Just did, I guess. Exactly. You guessed. It was more than that. They liked me. Petrov shook her head a little. I think you just wanted someone or something to like you. I ignore that. I'm sure they liked me. Petrov raises her eyebrows, but I continue. It's like I'm in tune with them. I, I can't explain except that after a while with them, I kind of get what they mean. At least I think I do. You think? Do they speak? No. Well, yeah, sort of. They ain't got speech, but they have a language source. It's all sense and symbols from what I figured. They write? Not how we know it. They emit a spray from that long, thin part they all got. Probosis, said Petrov. Yeah, and they pattern shapes in the air, carrying messages in their sense. I just breathe it in like I'm supposed to be reading the message, but really I'm just caught up in the spell of it. Petrov stares at me like if I'm the alien. She's trying to read my message. I can't make it out. And you told the captain this? Fuck no. Perseverance was in power down mode so we could store up juice. So it was like perma night on board. Most crew stayed in quarters when not on duty. I couldn't sleep on board no more. Somehow the air didn't feel quite right. Too recycled. Too fake. Plus, I didn't want to breathe in what someone like Mendez had already breathed out. Couldn't stop thinking about Rose. The way she observed me, curious about me, made me feel important. Whereas Petrov observed me out of suspicion. I had to see Rose, but I was confined to the ship. Captain Nikuro's orders. Felt cooped up and skittish. So I took to roaming around the ship like a cat on a hot titanium roof. On the way to the mess hall, I brushed past Mendez and his posse. It was bound to happen. Ah, shit, he says to me. Now I gotta go have a detox scrub. Who knows what bugs the bugs might have, he said. All his cronies laugh. Assholes, I thought. But I didn't say it. No point an exo like him could squash a regular like me. A bug. Could have pointed out their frames were kind of like exoskeletons the insect folk have, but they were bug-like ones. But why bother? One of them shoves me as they go past. Their, their internal hydraulic system makes them way too powerful, and I crash against the wall. If I weren't purple already, that sure as shit would have done it. But lying here all groggy-headed got me real clear-headed at the same time. Went straight down to the armory and got myself suited and booted with recon gear and a long-haul supplies pack. The young corporal on duty challenged me a little until he saw plas machete strapped in my thigh holster. Whatever. I was out the ship and gone. Orders be damned. I found Rose easily like I had a trace of her scent or something. Like she wanted me to find her. When she saw me, her antenna made this little dancing move. Yeah, she was pleased. It was good to be home. Over a few more days, I began to recognize some of the scents the insects secrete, as well as some of their gestures. It's how you put them together. A certain scent with one gesture means one thing, but with a different gesture means something else. Somehow I got a sense of what they're saying. I mean, I'm never going to have the faculties for all of the scents, but I learned to make some signs with my hands nice and big. They seemed to know what I meant. 
This time it took two weeks for the reconners to track me down. I noticed first in the reaction of the insects, antenna all twitching at once, frenetically scurrying around. Minutes later, I picked up the rumble of vehicles, typical of those recons, no attempt at stealth, like they didn't have nothing to be afraid of, as if this place was their backyard. I got my last gun and tried to tell Rose to stay put and keep all our folk together. I wasn't sure she got my meaning. Guess she never seen me so anxious either, but there wasn't time to explain a second time. Half a click away, three recon buggies crashed through foliage, scattering anything that lived in the undergrowth. I got myself tucked up high into the leafy canopy, well out of their sightline, and waited. Eventually, the reconners stopped and got out. They were all kitted up for the kill, a dozen or so of them. Petrov was there, too, so it meant they were going to play good cop first. They took up guard positions. Most weren't really watching out, though, just shooting the shit, chewing backy, swigging liquor. Discipline must have slipped back on Perseverance. The old admiral would have had them in the brig for that. But now it was a slacker regimen. I could see it all in their swagger. Kings of the friggin' jungle. I knew there was nothing stopping them from crossing the line. Petrov stayed in the vehicle, looked like she was about to puke, all tense and frowning. One glimpse of her face was enough to tell me how this was going to go. One of Mendez's goons spoke on the SATCOM. Perseverance. This is recon. In position. What's the order? Up in the trees, I couldn't hear the reply from the ship, but I saw the dude give a nod to Mendez and he pumped his hand rifle. Formation on my lead, he yelled. The rest of his crew of exo-framers primed their tools. Some had these shit-eaten grins that got me real riled up. On my belly, I got my last gun sighted and still my breathing. Lined one of them up and squeezed the trigger. He went down a nice, neat, last hole in his leg. The exo-frame would stop it going through bone, but it would sting like a motherfucker and he'd be down a while. The others freaked, firing rounds at nowhere in particular. They didn't have a damn clue where I was. I took another through the shoulder. This time, he squealed. Petrov will fix you, I thought. Just go back to the ship. Go back. Go back. Mendez hollered to hold fire. All went still for a few seconds. I popped one more right on the butt. Laughed my ass off as he went down, clutching his... Wasn't going to kill him, though. Got to draw the line somewhere. They scurried for cover, squatting down by the buggies. They looked scared. Rare for a bunch of exos. Too used to wading in toe-to-toe. -to -toe. That's fine against bandits and primus sector, where Paris and power count. Don't count for shit against an invisible sniper with a grudge. Petrov got out of her vehicle. She was unarmed. Mendez yelled at her, but... She must have known I weren't going to shoot her. It's just me, she said, scanning the tree line for a sight of me. Talk to me. I didn't say nothing in return. I slid down through the vegetation, staying out of sight. Petrov walked to the edge of the clearing, facing the foliage as if she were talking to it. I was only a few dozen yards from her. Still hidden. I know things didn't work out on the ship, she said but here's a chance to get back into the captain's good books. Captain can go stick her books where she likes, I said it quiet, so only Petrov would hear. She turned to face the direction my voice had come from. I suppose that is a no, then, she said in a low tone. You really mean to stay here, don't you? Petrov said it like a statement, not a question. She already knew the answer. She looked sad and shook her head. I'd seen that look before way too many times from way too many people. My folks, crewmates, Ciro. Means the same, whomever it comes from. Disappointed in you. Only one never did it was Rose. And then Rose was just behind me. She wasn't supposed to be here. I was goddamn terrified for her. But she inclined her head parts toward me like she wanted to tell me everything is okay. Put my hand on her back and breathed. I felt her coolness, a gentle thrum that vibrates through her. Watched the villi on her nape oscillating. And then Rose was just behind me. She wasn't supposed to be here. I was goddamn terrified for her. But she inclined her head parts toward me like she wanted to tell me everything is okay. I put my hand on her back and breathed. I felt her coolness, the gentle thrum that vibrates through her. 
watch the villi on her nape oscillating like they were dancing in the breeze. Something common about her presence I can't explain. There's something good here for me, I whisper in Petrov's direction. She nodded. How do you know you'll be safe? I don't. I ain't safe on board, neither. I saw Mendez edging forward a few hundred feet back. The insect folk actually like me. Trust me, too, I think. What will you do? Watch, learn, live. No orders, no drills, just exist. Petro's shoulders sagged. She tried. Mendez was much closer now, blaster raised. You got one chance to help us move them out. Only way I'm not going to blast you to hell, you stupid bug fucker. Fucking Mendez. Wanted to kill everything that weren't like him, as if being like him was so great. Never understood the insect folk, never wanted to. And you kill what you fear, and you fear what you don't understand, right? Well, maybe I never really understood that guy, but definitely feared him. So I killed him. One shot, a beauty exactly where it would pass through his exoframe. Surgical precision. Cutting out a cancer, perhaps. He stared at the hole in his side as his legs buckled. Mendez's crew was stunned. They shouted, cursed, made threats the usual. They were going to start shooting any second, and this time they knew where to aim. But it was like they were waiting for someone to give the order. Petrov turned to face them, holding up her arms. No, she yelled. Everyone froze. She went over to one of them took his satcom radio, asked to speak to the captain. She got pretty worked up, but I didn't hear what she said. Eventually, she was done talking without ever looking over her shoulder. Petrov got them to haul Mendez's body into a vehicle and move out. Guess I made my choice. I gotta live with it. Strange thing was, I actually shed tears. Mostly from all the adrenaline fizzing around in me. But it was the first time I killed someone. Even though it was Mendez. Sometimes things just creep up on you like that. Once Rose and I got back amongst the insects, they all came round me, all buzzing and stuff. I guess they hadn't seen no one cry before, like they got to study and process it. Rose stayed up close, stroking my face with her antenna. So gentle, like she was trying to comfort me. It worked. Sensitive folk, the insects. Life went on, and I learned more all the time. I watched them chatter with their scent gestures, getting a handle on it all, and I think I figured out what Rose found so curious about me. They love colors, and to them, certain colors are auspicious. There's a word Petrov would have used. A fine word for lucky, but anyway, purple is their thing, and with me looking like a damson berry because of the gun meds, I think I was kind of a good omen. There's never a sexual thing with me and Rose. I haven't even figured out yet how they do it, but I could live with that. We ourselves, a sort of intimacy that was like a stage beyond. A feeling of well-being, without a huffing and puffing that goes with it. They don't consider themselves individuals the same way we do. Everything is social with them, all about the group. I think they even share thoughts. Sure as shit, that would freak out most folk back home, but the insects make it work. Access to information, ideas, decisions got an equality to it, like everyone is part of the community. A lot we could learn from that. Then again, not sure I want to know the thoughts of guys like Mendez. But anyway, I don't have to think of them no more. Perseverance went on its way a good while ago. Heard it from miles away. Rose has been spending much of her time alone of late, not so much with her kind, but not so much with me neither. Figure she's been getting a bit of a hard time from some of the others. Pretty sure I'm the reason. Don't know if I make them nervous because maybe they didn't reckon on me sticking around. Maybe I'm just too strange for them after all, but Rose hasn't been interacting with the rest like normal. Maybe my weirdness is leaving its taint on her, too. I wonder if being close to me was just some sort of interesting experiment, or maybe even some sort of rebellion against the ways of her own kind. Perhaps some attempt on her part to be different. The other day, several of them surrounded her, all frantic gesturing, and there was a definite sour note in the air. Rose was low on her hind legs, like she was hemmed in by them all. 
I saw a few of them gesture in the direction of me, and also my Laz gun, propped up inside the pod. Reckon they're still shaken by what happened with Mendez. Probably the biggest thing to ever happen around here. It was a first contact for them too, of course. Except they just can't fly off or forget all about it. Not with me still here. Maybe I thought I could be their protector, but now Perseverance is gone, I bet they're wondering who they really need protecting from. Rose turned in my direction, and then away. Didn't respond when I waved to her. Don't have to be human to get what that meant. Maybe now my gun meds are wearing off and my skin ain't so colorful as I'm not as exotic as I was. Not auspicious. I watch as she crawls to an empty pod. The sheen of her carapace shimmering in the light as she turns away from me. Never seen anything so beautiful my whole goddamn life. Like living art. I could never hurt her or any of them. I've broken beautiful things before and I ain't going back to that. Pick up my last gun. Few of the insect folks are watching me, but that's okay. I want them to watch, even if Rose can't look my way. I dismantle the last gun piece by piece, laying each part carefully on the floor in front of me, hoping my meaning is clear. You kill what you fear, and you fear what you don't understand, right? Well, I understand. So there's nothing to fear. Once it is done, I sit there, knees up to my chest, and it's a damn humid night. I just stare at what is left of my gun, just a scatter of pieces that didn't make any sense, parts without partners, odd-shaped bits that have no meaning when they're apart from the others. I feel dismantled. I'm a piece removed. Reckon I will head out alone once it gets light. I think of Ciro, all those years ago. And I feel cold. What are your thoughts on the story? You can leave us a comment or a question at the Clark's World Magazine website itself, or you can go to the About Us page where all of our contact information is listed. We have more short stories coming up the month of April. I do hope you can come and join us. Until then, I bid you a very fond and hopefully very temporary farewell. <laughs>